Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let earth and heavenly saints proclaim the power and might of His great name. Let us exalt on bended Praise God the Holy Trinity. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Fill my life again. I give my life to follow. Everything I believe in, now I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Safe and secure from all alarms. Lean on Jesus, lean on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting gods. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting gods. I have blessed peace. We 
with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting Church, one of the things that's been so interesting to me and so encouraging to me is the stories I'm hearing about how you've been doing communion at home with your families. The way you've been doing that, how you've been doing that, I'm so encouraged by those stories. I've been up here doing drive through communion, and, and I see you drive through, and you pull off to the side, and the way you're spending time together, that's just so encouraging. We found a new way to do communion, and it doesn't have to be on Sundays together. I know you'd rather be here on Sundays together, but I'm so encouraged by your stories of communion at home. Today we want to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, so let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for each day. Father, our thoughts right now, thank you so much for Jesus. Father, His life, His death, His burial, His resurrection... Everything about Jesus that gives us victory. Everything about Jesus that gives us hope. Everything about Jesus that, that gives us a future. Father, we focus our attention on Jesus at this time. We pray this in His name. Amen. Salvation belongs to our God Who sits upon the throne to the Lamb be praise and glory wisdom and thanks honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever be to our God forever Morning, church. Thanks for joining us online again for worship. Let me share this story with you. Albert Einstein was traveling from Princeton on a train, and when the conductor came down his aisle to punch his ticket, Einstein realized he couldn't find his ticket. He reached into his vest pocket. Ticket wasn't there. He looked down into his trouser pockets. Ticket wasn't there. He opened his briefcase and looked in his briefcase for his ticket, and it wasn't there. And the conductor kindly said to him, Dr. Einstein, I know who you are, and we all know who you are, and we're sure you bought a ticket, so don't worry about it. 
The conductor then continued down the aisle and he was punching tickets along the way. And just before he went to the next car, he turned back and he looked and he, he saw Einstein on his hands and knees looking for his ticket on the floor. The conductor rushed back and he said, Dr. Einstein, don't worry. I know who you are. It's not a problem. You don't need a ticket. To which Einstein said, Young man, I know who I am. I'm just not sure where I'm going. I really like that illustration in our day and age when it comes to GPS. I can remember when we bought our first Garmin. Let me illustrate this way. Um, there's a Garmin up on the left. Your phone may have GPS. Your car, most cars these days have a GPS. We can't seem to get anywhere these days without some kind of GPS. And they're really nice when they work or at least when we think they work. So I, I don't know how it is in your car, but when I'm driving, there's a lot of communication between me and the GPS, me and the vehicle, or me and my radio, because a lot of times I hear this word, recalculating, recalculating. I mean, there have been many times I've ignored the GPS. There have been many times I've yelled at the GPS. There's been a lot of times I've turned off the GPS. Because the GPS sometimes takes us a different way, sometimes takes us down a different road, sometimes takes us a little longer, and more times than not, I'll go the direction that I want to go, and I ignore what the GPS is telling me. Hmm. You know, sometimes when we're driving down the road, we lose our direction. Sometimes when we're driving through life, we lose our direction. And sometimes the church can lose its direction. And so when we lose our direction, we need to hit reset. Reset. Sometimes we need to reset the direction. You know, it's hard to believe it's been 11 weeks since we were meeting together in this building. Who would have ever thought that a pandemic would close the doors to the church building? But in reality, our doors were locked, but the church was never closed. The church is never closed because we are the church. And so, like I said a couple of weeks ago, maybe, just maybe, God has been using this pandemic to scatter us, to get us out of the church building, to spread the Word, to share Jesus, to get us out of our comfort zones. Maybe this pandemic has been a reminder for churches. Maybe this pandemic is a way for us to hit reset. Reset. Reset on how we do church. Reset on how we understand church. Maybe reset on our role in this community. Many churches get confused on what they're supposed to be about. Many churches get confused regarding their direction, and they spend a lot of time talking about vision and mission because sometimes churches lose their direction. Churches are meant to be way more than just what we do in a church building. So if our goal has only been to reopen the doors to the church building, then we need to do a reset on what church is all about. I mean, what we've experienced the last 10 to 12 weeks should challenge us to do a reset on what we call church. I mean, think about it. There are a lot of people, and their only goal is to get back in this building as if this is our only identity. I like this quote I read this week. Those churches that hurry back to worship will give members the perception that they need the public gathering to truly be the church. So all the things we've been telling them about church happening wherever you are sounds hypocritical right now. So today I want to illustrate in a number of ways the church is so much more than a building. We are so much more than a building. I mean, if we make church all about this building or if we make church all about just meeting together, then we're heading back to a normal that I'm not sure we need to go back to. Normal being, can we just do it the way we always did it? So last week we talked about resetting the direction of a man's life and we use this scripture. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching the faith and correcting error, for resetting the direction of a man's life and training him in good living. So again, last week we talked about resetting the direction of a man's life. This week I want to do this, resetting the direction of the church, resetting the direction of the church. I like the way Charles Swindoll describes it. He says, The church in the first century was the object of God's attention and affection. It was purified by persecution 
which caused its influence to spread like a flaming wheat field in Nebraska. Its contagious momentum impacted every little nook and cranny of the known world. And before long, there were pockets of believers in villages and towns and cities, none of them with ornate cathedrals, but all of them with the heart of God. He continues and says, But during the latter part of the 4th century, something strange happened to the body. Church became a formal thing. Christianity ultimately became an official religion. It took upon itself the marks of an organization, and Swindoll says predictably, the church lost its way. I like what he says. The church, like a bloated whale, lay awkward, enormous, lifeless atop the swells and waves of historic events. He continues. Here's what he says. The early church grew. 3,000 believers on the first day, the day of Pentecost. They had no church building. They had no pastor. They had no church constitution. They had no board members. They had no handbook. Then what did they have? They had Jesus Christ. And they went everywhere. And they preached Jesus. And lives were changed. And they had no building. So five years from now, a year from now, I hope we look back on what happened during this pandemic. And I hope we realize that we did a reset. We did a reset. I mean, we've already been challenged in so many ways. But I love this quote. Here's another quote for you this week. If you want to learn how to play chess, you should start by removing your own queen. Once you've mastered the game without the most powerful piece, then put the queen back in and see how good you are. For the church, the Sunday service is the queen. We've been relying on it too much. Now that the queen's been taken off the board, it's time to discover what all the other pieces can do. Here's the point. If we make church all about Sunday mornings and only about Sunday mornings and only about worship, then I think we've done a poor job of defining what church is and what we're supposed to be about. So the past 10 to 12 weeks, we've hit reset. So I just want to illustrate today how we have been resetting the direction of the church. You may not realize, but let me illustrate. We did a reset on online church. Wow, the last 10 to 12 weeks, the, the things we've been doing for online church. This pandemic has all but forced us to, to do a reset on how we do online church. I mean, we realize that we don't have to be at the church building to do church. We don't have to be at the church building to do online worship. And so we hit reset. And we've got people that have been watching us online who have never been in this building. I know of other churches that have people watching online that, has, that they've never been at their church building. So we hit reset, and we've already ordered some equipment so that we can do live stream worship. In fact, I've even read that many of the larger churches have an online minister an online minister on staff whose goal is to move people from being online to offline. So we've done a reset on how we do online church. We did a reset on online worship, closely related. So our goal these past couple of weeks is just to provide worship, to, to provide some content to you so that you can worship at home. And we wanted to do more than just provide a sermon. And we wanted to do more than just provide singing. We wanted to do more than just provide a communion thought. So you've noticed, if you've been watching online, we wanted to provide you with faces. Faces of our members. And they sang songs. And they read scripture. And they shared their thought. And those faces took so many different angles. You saw faces of children in our Belton kids. You saw faces of our teens, our youth group from our big group. You saw faces of couples. You saw faces of men. And you saw faces of women. Again, our goal was to show you faces so that you could see people that you haven't been seeing and hear people that you haven't been hearing. And we learned something along the way. We learned something. It's kind of interesting how theology changed. It's kind of interesting how church changes. I mean, the message should never change, but the methods should always change. So there's been an interesting thing along the way that has changed our theology, and it's called projection and screens. Projection and screens has changed our theology because there's things we can put on screens. There's things we can put through these projectors that years ago we would never even think about doing. 
So we established some boundaries at one time, and then those boundaries changed, and we started doing some things, and you've allowed us to do some things just by putting stuff on screens. So what we put on the screen, for some reason, what we put on video, it's interesting, has been immune to objection. Video seems to, have, seems to draw a whole lot less controversy. So that when the pandemic hit, I was preaching on a woman's place. We had done one to two lessons, and the final lesson will be next week. But then that pandemic hit. And with our goal of, again, our goal was just to show you faces, we hit reset on the role of women. Reset on the role of women. At least during the pandemic. I mean, if you've watched online, then you've seen women participate. Some might say, well, again, that, that was just on the screen. That was just on the video. That was just on Facebook. That was just on BeltonChurch.com. Again, our goal was not to push the envelope. Our goal was, we want you to see faces and hear voices. But we hit reset on how we think about the role of women. So if you want to learn more, I'm going to tell you, come back next week and we're going to visit a woman's place with the last lesson. But I found this illustration. I love this quote from a church in Dallas. Women who have never spoken in public worship, who didn't think they had anything to say, who didn't think they had a voice, are willing to speak on video. And the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. People are missing each other right now and are willing to work harder to connect. The content has been so good, our church is considering continuing the video segments once we're able to worship together again. Again, that's a church in Dallas. But we're hearing the same thing. We're hearing the same thing here about all of the faces, all of the voices, whether it's young people, whether it's old people, whether it's male or female, we've been hearing the same thing. And so we, we hit reset on the role of women. But again, I want to encourage you to come back next week and I'll tell you more about that. We hit reset when it comes to online community. We hit reset and realize that we don't have to be together to be together. So you've been hearing some things maybe about Zoom meetings. Maybe you've never heard about a Zoom meeting. Maybe you don't even know what I'm talking about. But many of our small groups have been meeting online through Zoom. They've been having Zoom meetings. The elders and the staff have every week had at least one Zoom meeting. So being together face-to-face -face is so much better. But we've discovered and we've had creative ways to realize that we can do community online. We hit reset on building community online. We hit reset on giving. Let me say it this way. Our giving has been happening in a variety of ways. Some of y'all have been um, mailing in your checks. Some of y'all have been bringing your checks by the church office. Some of y'all have been coming through drive through communion and you drop off your contribution there. We've seen a, a, an increase on online giving through our Breeze uh, app. We've seen an increase in giving through online banking. And I want to say right now, thank you, thank you, thank you for your generosity. We have not taken a major hit we're down about $15,000, but we've not taken a major hit because of your generosity. So if you're not accustomed to giving online, can I encourage you to do that on a regular basis? If you don't know how to do that, can I encourage you to call the church office and someone will help, help you set that up. We're continuing to hit reset with our giving. So on Sunday mornings when we meet together, we're going to have contribution boxes on the walls in the back and a couple out in the foyer because we're trying to remove physical contact right now. We're trying to do as much as we can for health purposes. So we've hit reset and we're going to have some contribution boxes in the back. So we're learning to do giving in different ways. Maybe it's time we hit reset on the direction of the church. This pandemic has given us an opportunity to hit reset on what we do, to hit reset on how we do it, to hit reset on why we do it, to hit reset on how we need to be changing as we move forward. Listen, folks, this, this world is... You've seen the stuff on TV, the unrest, the riots, everything happening in our country. This world is lost and can no longer be reached can't be reached inside these walls. So we need to hit reset on how we do everything.
It's time to hit reset on the direction of the church. If there's anything we've learned in the last 12 weeks, it's that churches that are growing are out in the community. Churches that are growing are out on the front lines. Churches that are growing are not just contained in their church buildings. There's so much more to us being the church than just being in these walls. I love being in these walls. I love being together on Sundays. I love worshiping together. But that's not our only identity, and that's not what we're called to do. So let's hit reset on the direction of the church. Let's hit reset on the direction towards Jesus Christ in our lives and Jesus Christ in our families. Let's hit reset on the direction of how we do church and how we do ministry and how we do worship. Let's hit reset on what we do inside these walls. Let's hit reset on what we do outside these walls. Because our world needs Jesus and God's calling us to deliver that message. So again, we need to continue to scatter. But I'm so thankful for the day that we can come together and worship together. Thanks for joining us online.